Good morning on this lovely, rainy Sunday morning. Honestly, I had thoughts this morning, and I said, Phyllis, can I just stay in bed today? <laughs> Do you ever have those thoughts on rainy days? It would be really just nice to just, uh, and then I, I realized that's just not a possibility. But I'm glad that you're here today, and you know, this is one of those days where sleeping in uh, could seem very attractive, and, and yet we uh, come together today to, to worship and to, to praise God and to to thank him for all that is ours in Christ Jesus. So I'm glad that you're here with me today, and uh, it's always a blessing uh, to get together. And uh, we need the rain, the water table and everything, so it's a good thing to have the, the rain that we have, but we thank God for all that is ours. Uh, some announcements as we begin today. Um, we are going to have a governing board meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for those members that are on the governing board. Uh, Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30 we have Kids Club. Uh, on Thursday morning we have the uh, Mifflin Community Food Ministry meeting at 9 a.m. And on Thursday night we are in uh, our Zoom Bible study. We uh, are going to be in Genesis 38. And we are all about Joseph right now and learning about everything that goes with that. I tell you what, God didn't hold anything back on uh, that family, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. Uh, he shows all the wrinkles. He shows all of the faults, all the, all the failures, and yet God was working out his plan all the way up the line of David through to Christ Jesus who would deliver us from sin and death. And so it's a marvelous love story from God, and he doesn't hold anything back. Uh, the altar flowers are <clears throat> presented to the glory of God uh, to beautify the sanctuary by Marsha and Doug Soul. So thank you. Very, very pretty today. The uh, rosebud is presented to the glory of God in honor of Robin Lash's birthday on the 22nd by Jim. Happy birthday, Robin. And uh, Bob Fritz had a birthday yesterday. So all of these birthdays, I, uh, <clears throat> I saw somewhere the more birthdays you have, the longer you live. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Uh, the bulletin presented the glory of God in loving memory of my grandmother, Marion S. Ruth, by Becky Philippi. Our ushers today are uh, Glenn and Dave Worley. Uh, greeters were Gene and Jerry Baum. <clears throat> There's a flower update in <coughs> working with the new florist. <coughs> we found the cost of weekly flowers, <coughs> excuse me, will be starting at uh, $50, which I think is $2 higher <coughs> than what it used to be. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> also, all the leaders that are involved in the annual congregational meeting, if you haven't got your report to me yet, try to do so as quickly as you can. Uh, I prefer it in a word format, but any way that you can get it to me is great, and so we can get the digest put together. Uh, <clears throat> there is going to be a, <clears throat> a congregational dinner on uh, February 11th, <clears throat> excuse me, here is the menu, and uh, if you're going to attend, we need your, your name and <clears throat> the number attending. <clears throat> Doug, I'm going to have to hand it off to you, I think. I... <clears throat> uh, we have... Uh, the newsletter for February is, is ready. Please take one with you today. There's uh, pantry needs that we have. Uh, thank you from Phyllis Brace for your prayers and also the snack pack that she received at uh, Christmas time. Betty Cattermall, one of our, our members, uh, is going to be 93 on the 5th of February. And so we want to wish Betty Cattermall a happy birthday. There is a, a Lent schedule in uh, the uh, bulletin today. We're going to start our Lenten journey this year. Uh, St. John's is going to be hosting our Ash Wednesday service. Uh, that will be at 7 p.m. Uh, each week after that, we will have a uh, Lenten service here on Wednesday uh, evenings at 7 p.m. And then on Holy Week, we'll have a Monday, Thursday service at 7 p.m. and a Good Friday service at noon. Uh, if you're able to attend any of those services, we'd love to see you. There's a list of the the scriptures and uh, titles for those messages. And uh, with that, uh, I will turn it over to uh, Doug. Our uh, selection from the EC uh, discipline this week regards denominational identity, specifically evangelical. 
Believing the Bible to be the authoritative, inspired, infallible word of God, we affirm that people are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Compelled by this good news and commissioned to make disciples of Jesus Christ, each local church prayerfully and strategically carries out this commission to its own community and beyond. And we find reference to that in the scriptures in Matthew 28, 18 through 19, Acts 1, 1 verse 8, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 9, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and 2 Timothy 3, 16. Please join me in this morning's call to worship. We gather today to worship the one who created us, the one who calls us, the one who equips us, the one who loves us without end. With joyful hearts, let us worship God. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity today to, to come and to worship, to praise you and to, to love you, to adore you, to proclaim you. We uh, pray your blessing upon the reading of the word, of our time in prayer, our time of fellowship, our time of seeking you. We pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we might indeed have that extra measure of your presence, that we might leave here today <coughs> revived and transformed, equipped to do your will in the world. For we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <clears throat> Our opening hymn today is hymn number 479, Softly and Tenderly, 479. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies? Mercies for you and for me. Come home. Come home. Come home. You who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner, come home. Now fleeting, the moments are passing, passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering, death's night is calling, coming for you and for me. Come home. Come home. Come home. You who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, come home, you who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus. 
Jesus is calling, calling a sinner, come home. Amen. You may be seated. We are, are grateful for everyone that um, comes together uh, in the body of Christ to share their their time, their talent, and their treasure. We had uh, dinner church last night. We had 43 people for dinner church. Uh, Grant Henry did a marvelous job with the, uh, the pork. They had pork and sauerkraut and mashed potatoes and other things. He uh, is the griddle master. He um, said he set his alarm clock uh, every hour so he could get up when he was smoking the, the pork to be able to spray it with some apple juice to keep it nice and moist and, and tender. And it was uh, very delicious and so a great time. But just an opportunity to share the love and grace of, of, of Christ in a lost and hurting world. Dinner church is uh, just an informal setting where we can share a meal together, we can hear the word of God, and we can uh, pray for one another. We're even uh, singing some praise hymns occasionally, so that was a, a good time to be had. Um, so thank you uh, for all that you do. It, it is making a difference for the kingdom of God. I uh, so enjoy uh, uh, Joan, uh, who has the Fun and Faith Kids Club on Wednesday evenings. Uh, we have several of the neighborhood children that are attending that now, and so we're seeing uh, that making a difference in uh, the young people in our community, and uh, what, a, what a blessing that's been. We have a uh, Little Jessica with a K, uh, this, this young lady has the heart of an evangelist. She truly does. I am convinced that God is going to use her in amazing ways one day as she continues to encourage friends and family to join us as we worship. And so we're very thankful for that. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the gift and the giver. As we continue to lift up the name of Christ Jesus in a, a lost and fallen world, we pray, Father, that uh, you would continue to uh, help us in the endeavor to reach men and women, boys and girls, with the love and grace of Christ Jesus, and that they could receive him as Savior and Lord and begin to live their lives faithfully for him. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We, uh, we continue to publish in the, the bulletin each week uh, scripture readings for the week as, as well as uh, praises and prayer requests on the other side uh, for those that, that need God's hand of healing. Truly, it's each and every one of us. Uh, but we, we're also aware that, that we are a congregation beyond our walls. We have people in other places that uh, connect with our stream service. Uh, we have uh, Bill and Vicki Moore in Akron, Ohio, that are in need of our prayers. Uh, we have Gerard Sherry and Frank and Marge Sherry uh, who are in need of prayers. Uh, Gerard is a, uh, a regular uh, uh, attender of ours through the stream service. It's uh, Phyllis's brother, and uh, he uh, is, enjoys our, our services, and so we're grateful, but he has some physical needs as well that we can pray for, as well as those on our list. We uh, continue to pray for uh, Dave and Lynn Campbell, uh, Barry McElwee, uh, Alan Schlechter, uh, Reverend Jerry and Jean Baum, uh, Doris Likens, who sits all the way in the back when she's able to uh, attend with us, uh, Robin Lash uh, for upcoming procedures, uh, Crystal Alba, Ben and Joy Heckman, uh, they... <clears throat> 
There are members that haven't been here in a while because they moved away from us a little over two hours away, but we continue to uh, hold them in high esteem and, and pray for them in their journey. Uh, Marlon Lafferty, uh, our former district field director, was at the, uh, we had our quarterly uh, district meeting yesterday in Lenhartsville, and uh, Marlon was there. He was praising God for uh, the healing and the medicines that he has to kind of help him along the way. Uh, Pauline Schmel is here, continuing ongoing things to keep her in prayer. And uh, truly, uh, all of us, I, I think that every one of us needs the healing touch of God in, uh, in various ways. And the good thing about God is he, he meets our needs in, in these ways. He, he knows what we want before we even ask. I think the asking is so that we're kind of aware of all that's going on. We're, uh, we're sharing you know, information that is true in our lives with the understanding that, that God hears and he provides in his way and in his time. Uh, too often, I think people uh, want God to uh, be able to uh, make the transaction that we want. This is what I want, God, and can you please give that to me? And God sometimes does those things, but above all, God desires to have that, that intimate relationship with us, and prayer is one of those ways that we can, can hear, we can listen, we can lay before him our our prayer requests, our praises, but we can trust him that no matter what we're facing, that uh, we're not facing it alone, that he indeed is with us every step of the way. You know, we were kind of talking about that in Sunday school this morning, just ongoing physical issues that don't seem to get better and how difficult that can be at times for people to live under those types of uh, you know, uh, physical uh, issues that are constantly there and uh, faith is, is an important part of that. I know people that have been suffering through physical ailments for decades and uh, you wish you could just say a prayer and, and, and make it better. But I'm convinced that the God that loves us does ultimately make everything better in his time and in his way. It's just a matter of faith. It's a matter of trust. Let us pray. Father, we come together today. We pray for those upon our prayer list, those that are on our hearts and our minds, those that uh, we love those that are in our community that we know have need. We just pray, Father, that you would meet those needs today in your time and in your way. We uh, pray, Father, that in the process of, of crying out to you and that we have a, a greater understanding of the depth of your love for us, all wonderfully provided through your son, Jesus, who came and lived among us, lived, died, and rose again so that we might have victory over sin, victory over death, and everything else in life that hinders us. And so we thank you, Father, for those blessings. We pray, Father, for those that are in hospital and nursing care. We pray for our shut-ins. Uh, we pray for those that are not able to be here today. We uh, pray for those that are traveling, those that are facing you know, financial difficulties, those that are having a crisis of faith that in, in seeking you and finding you, they can find the, the blessing of relationship with you through your son, Jesus. We uh, pray for our missionaries and the missions that we support as a, a congregation, as a denomination. We are, are thankful, Father, for the opportunity to share the good news to those that desperately need to know the truth. Uh, we uh, thank you uh, that you meet needs, that you provide wonderfully in Christ Jesus, the the Savior who taught the disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our uh, praise hymn today is hymn number 596, I Surrender All. Easier said than done. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him, in His presence daily live. I surrender, I surrender all, I surrender, I surrender all, all 
to Thee, my blessed Saviour, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender, humbly at His feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender, I surrender all, I surrender, I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Saviour, I surrender To Jesus I surrender, make me Savior, holy thine. May thy Holy Spirit fill me, may I know thy power divine. I surrender, I surrender all, I surrender, I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Saviour, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power, let thy blessing fall on me. I surrender, I surrender all. I surrender, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. I surrender all easy to sing it's still harder to do i think to surrender every aspect of our life for god's use i know that it can be a burden we uh, tend to be able to compartmentalize things we this is my area this is the area that i allow god into where he desires to be involved in all areas of our life uh, it's where our focus is you know if our focus is on the the things of the world, then uh, our, our thoughts are going to be worldly. If our focus is on the things of God and God himself through Christ Jesus, our focuses tend to be more aligned with his will for our lives. It's a constant, uh, it's a constant battle, if you will. I uh, pray that every year in the new year that God can have more of my life in this new year. And uh, it, it really is a... Um, an opportunity to, to strive to allow God to have more of us, but it, it does take time, it takes diligence, and it, it takes a, a willingness to persevere through everything that wants to, to pull us away from God. And there's a lot of things out there. I, uh, I was sharing with the, um, the 8 o'clock uh, service that our bishop has asked us to, uh, to pray and fast on the first Wednesday of the month to uh, pray for the church. You know, we're facing you know, a lot of challenges in the world that we live today, but we pray and we uh, trust that, uh, that it's through the, the spiritual disciplines that, that we are better attuned to, to hear God. But uh, to do that, the, the irony of that is uh, our district lunch is the first Wednesday of the month. And so uh, our, our Charles Walker, our district field director, said, well, you can come and watch us eat. Uh, I'm not keen on that. But, um, but we can fast. We can fast from food. Uh, one of the things that's a, a big killer of time is uh, our, our smart devices, uh, social media in particular. We can spend hours upon hours uh, in mindless um, entertainment uh, with really no redeeming value to it other than to entertain us. Uh, just think if we could take a fraction of that time and give it in the pursuit of God and the things of God in the world around us, how wonderful that would be. Well, my message today is about the plain truth. It is, uh, it's plain because it's easy for us to, to receive. 
true, there are parts of Scripture that are difficult. You, know, you look at a passage and say, I don't fully comprehend it, and that's okay. In, in time, more will be revealed. But there are plenty of things in Scripture that we can readily connect with. One that uh, the Savior of the world left the throne room of heaven. He came, put on flesh. He dwelt among us. He lived. He died. He rose again. He ascended to the right hand of the throne of God, and even now is interceding on our behalf. And so we have a truth that is plain, uh, plain to those that are, are willing to, to hear. Uh, Jesus was fond of saying, for those that have ears to hear, let them hear. He wasn't inferring that people didn't have ears. He was inferring that people don't have the ability at times to listen, to, to truly receive something in, and then to allow it to uh, transform our lives. Can I have somebody offer a prayer for the message today, please? Amen. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. In my 20 plus years of pastoral ministry, this is a, you know, I, I left uh, the Baltimore Sun as a special projects manager and pursued what I felt God calling me to at a younger age and, and never looked back and God opened one door after another. And uh, ministry is filled with amazing blessings. It's also filled with a lot of challenges that uh, can impact the, the pastorate. Uh, if you happen to get the, the, um, the Reading Eagle, and you saw the, the article in the newspaper Saturday morning on the front page, it says that uh, since uh, the COVID pandemic, that uh, pastors are burnt out, a lot of them are burnt out, and uh, that 25%, I believe, or more, uh, are seriously considering leaving the pastorate uh, because of all of the stresses that they face in the world. Um, I, I like to think that there are opportunities that are disguised as stress sometimes that an opportunity to see how God can work through things. In my uh, 20 plus years, I've had people tell me why they don't go to church. And, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of different reasons why people don't go to church. And in uh, some cases, they have to work. You know, I get it. You got to work. Then find another day. Find a church that meets on Saturday night then or find a, a, a church that meets your schedule and, and go to it. Recently, um, I reached out to somebody that I haven't seen in a while, and uh, they told me that uh, they're not coming to church because they're angry. I said, really? I said, what are you angry about? And, uh, and this person told me that I'm angry that evangelicals put Donald Trump in office. And I'm like, I'm sorry my definition of evangelical and your definition are two different definitions. My definition of being evangelical has nothing to do with belonging to one political party or another. It's all about sharing the good news of Jesus in a lost and hurting world. And, and I, I talked to this person for about 40 minutes and they're like, I just, I can't, I, I, I just hate this guy so much. And, and, and you guys are are guilty. And I'm like, the, what guys? You guys? I could take a survey, and I'm willing to bet that I have Democrats and Republicans in here today. Now, this message is not about politics. It's all about Christ and him crucified. But somewhere along the line over the years, the, the word evangelical has taken on a negative connotation. Uh, to the point where people believe that you're, you're a hate monger, you're a homophobe, you, uh, you are really the problem that's dividing this country. And as far as I know, my job description has not changed. It is still 
to reach and teach and grow people to be disciples of Jesus Christ, to share the good news in a lost and, and hurting world. Pray for me and pray for this person because it's just not true. You know, granted, we, we are a country divided, and we need to pray about that. But being evangelical has nothing to do with who gets in office or doesn't get in office. And as I see it, our identity and our purpose has not changed since day one. You know, the truth is those who identify as evangelicals are those who are Christ followers that are desiring to serve him to, to reach men and women, boys and girls with the love and grace of Jesus. You know, he came to set us free from sin and death. One day we will open our eyes and we will see our Savior face to face and we will know that God has loved us to the depth that we could have never fully understood. You know, simply put, Evangelism is the spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness. We do that in, in various ways and forms. We share this good news by, by how we live, the things we say and do, the places that we go, the places that we, uh, we give our time and, and talents in. It's announcing the good news of Christ Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his, his ascension, and, and the fact that he's cheering us on, he's praying on our behalf. To me, that is what it means to be an evangelical. Honestly, I pray that they can find some other people to, to put out there in the forefront that people can pick from. I've always said, vote your conscience. You know, I'm not telling you who to vote for, nor am I allowed to tell you who to vote for. I will tell you, though, to vote for your conscience, but don't think for a minute that being evangelical means that we believe one side over the other. It's just not true. You know, it was Jesus who gave uh, his followers the Great Commission, and everything we do filters through the Great Commission and the great commandment, the commandment to, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, all of our strength, and to love others as self. And then the great commission he gives in Matthew 28, and we read this in the Gospel of Matthew, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You know, I couldn't help but think in, in reviewing this that there were people in Jesus' day that <clears throat> wanted him to be the king, to, to free them from Roman oppression. You know, they didn't like the political party that was in rule then, and Jesus was not about being part of a political party. He was all about transforming people from being unsaved to becoming a child of God through his shed blood. And so he says, all authority is mine. That your, your job, your mission, your purpose is to go and make disciples. To reach the men and women, boys and girls with the love and grace of Jesus. Baptize them. We baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we teach them to obey the commands that God has given us. And Jesus says, look, I'm with you, even to the end of the age. And so we have a God that is not absent. And we're to teach. These were not suggestions. These were mandates from God that this is what we do. You have your assignment, and your assignment is to go out into the world and share the good news. And our assignment is the same today. Our assignment is to know Christ, to love him, and to proclaim him in a lost and hurting world. You know, our commission from our Lord and Savior has nothing to do with a political party. It has everything to do with reaching, teaching, and growing others to come to Jesus as Savior and Lord and then to share this good news with others. We were talking about that yesterday at our district meeting that, that really our, our goal in life is to know God and love him so much that his love overflows from our lives into the lives of others, that we can make a difference. 
You know, I can think back to my formative years and people that made a difference for me in the faith that were encouragers and, and people that continue to, to keep before me the, the blessing of God through Christ Jesus. And I think about those people, and uh, they had people that followed them, and then there were people that came after them that now have grown up in the faith that people are now following and maturing that the realization that our job, our purpose for being is to share Jesus. That's what it means to be an evangelical. We're to make disciples and discipleship is the task of training believers to become mature followers of Christ, growing in their knowledge of, their love for, and their obedience to the Lord. And it is a, a process. It is an ongoing thing. We live in a, a dark and, and sinful world. It's just as dark and sinful as it was in, in Paul's day, uh, and yet uh, we still battle with the, the sin issue that faces all of us, and the answer to the sin issue is Jesus, who sets us free from sin and death. It's that simple. And, um, you know, like I said, over the years, people tell me a lot of reasons why they, they do or, or don't go to church. And uh, some of them are valid reasons, and uh, some just uh, are not. Um, I think that our purpose is to connect as a fellowship of believers, the ecclesia, the church. We are, uh, uh, we are the church of God, not a building but people that God has built up in the faith that he uses throughout the world to make a difference. You know, whenever I see uh, our young people, or even old people for that matter, that come to that point where they realize that they need a Savior, and they finally surrender their life to Jesus, and along with the angels in heaven that rejoice, I rejoice with them because I know that they're one step closer to being where they need to be. And, and I know there's no better place to be than in the hands of a holy God that loves us and, and has a plan for us. I used to uh, love to go to Brownsville, Pennsylvania, where my grandparents lived, and I always enjoyed that, that four-hour drive with the, the realization that I'm, I'm coming home. I'm, I'm coming to a place that is special, a place that I'm loved and valued, and a place where I'm part of the family. And really, friends, we're all on this journey, and we're, we're heading home to a place where we're loved and valued and, and needed. And so I, I don't know how the, the word evangelical became a, a dirty word to, to some people, but it's just not true. You know, we need to, we need to love people into the kingdom. I'm praying for this person. I'm reaching out to them. I'm working overtime. They don't have a personal problem with me, just the fact that we have evangelical in our name. Um, which is unfortunate. I know, I can't make this stuff up. Our scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. It's the Apostle Paul and his, his, his message on wisdom. And I really love this passage of scripture because it outlines Paul's purpose, what he's supposed to do and what he's not supposed to do. And, and this is what he, he writes. He says, when I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did this so that you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Yet when I'm among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. No, the wisdom we speak is the mystery of God, his plan that was previously hidden, even though he made it for our ultimate glory before the world began. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. That is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. 
No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that came or that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truth. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them. And they can't understand it, for only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. And those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach Him? But we understand these things when we have the mind of Christ. You know, if your, your whole focus is the world, your mind is on the world, but if your focus is on God and the things of God through Christ, your, your, your mind is on God. It's focused on those things. You know, the Apostle Paul uh, was a neat guy. I, I, I always uh, love to use him as a, an example of someone that didn't let life get him down. Uh, I mean, this is a guy that was beaten and shipwrecked and stoned and, and imprisoned and ultimately martyred for his faith, and he never lost sight of what was his in Christ Jesus. Here was a guy named Saul. He grew up in a very prominent family. He was uh, circumcised on the eighth day. He was uh, from the tribe of Benjamin. He was a Pharisee among Pharisees. He went to the, the best schools. He had the, uh, the best teachers. He had the best of everything in life. The only thing he didn't have uh, at that point was a personal Savior in Christ Jesus. And when he came to that realization that all this other stuff really didn't matter, he says, as a matter of fact, I consider it all garbage in comparison with knowing Christ Jesus as Savior and Lord. And so he's talking about, you know, when he first came on the scene, he didn't use these big and impressive words or, or, or some way of, of deceiving people. Everything he did, he did uh, preaching Christ Jesus and him crucified. Um, I received Jesus as Savior and Lord at a Billy Graham crusade. Billy Graham had the amazing gift to preach the gospel truth in such a plain and down-to-earth way. It was like talking to a friend and uh, wanting you to understand that, that you're a sinner. And, and as soon as you realize that you are a sinner, that in our depravity, we do things that are outside of the will of God, and therefore we need a Savior. And God sent His Son into the world to, to be our Savior. He said, I, I came to you in weakness and timid and trembling. My message is very plain. I didn't use clever or persuasive speeches. I relied on the power of the Holy Spirit. I, um, I tried to, to do that. I try to rely on God and, and leave the Holy Spirit room in, in my messages. I, I don't want to be a, a slave to a, a script. I, I don't want to, to rely on uh, everything being prepared ahead of time because I know that God can intervene in these things and speak the truth that he wants to, to speak. But he says, you know, when I was among mature believers, I did speak with words of wisdom uh, words that people could understand. Kind of reminds me, when I first went to seminary, I had to carry around a dictionary with me. It's like, what? What does that mean? And I'd go all these words, and I'm like, why can't they just say that the cat is black? You know, why do you have to have these words that nobody can understand? But it was a language that they understood and that I ultimately learned to understand. But if you're speaking in words that people don't know what the heck you're talking about, it's not going to be effective. Paul understood that. In, in reaching people, he spoke to people in ways that they could always understand. And he held before them the blessing in having a Savior and the understanding of what God has prepared for those who love him. You know, I have a, a, an idea of uh, what awaits us one day. Scripture gives us a glimpse into eternity. We, uh, 
we're able to see what God has done uh, in creating this world. We uh, know that God created a good world, but we unfortunately, uh, because of sin, have marred that world. But, uh, you know, Paul's saying, look, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined or conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. You know, I, I talk to people and, and I tell them that, that this is who we are and what we are because we not only believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world, but we understand our desperate need for him and our need to proclaim him in this world in which we live. Uh, I can remember with the food ministry um, uh, last week, it was still pretty darn cold out there and still snow on the ground and everybody was worried on how that was all going to uh, work out. And uh, Debbie Anazuski, the, the day before, said, I need you to pray about the weather. You have a good rapport with God. And uh, I said, well, uh, you know, he gave you two good years, <laughs> and so we're going we're gonna to get this. One of the people in the ministry, she told that to me, she said, uh, he said to her, he said, he's not in operations. He's in sales and promotions. And, and so you need to talk directly to God about the weather. He's the one that operates all of that. Uh, I'm not sure I'm in sales and promotions, to be honest with you. I, I believe I'm in the, the business of winning souls for the Lord of Jesus. I, I like to tell people I'm a, a, a tour guide with Promised Land Tours. I, I'm leading people home to a, a place of bliss, a, a place of, of blessing, a, a place of, of being surrounded by loved ones and surrounded by a God that has loved us and given us everything that we need in, in Christ Jesus. And I, I guess I do promote that, but I'm not selling anything. I'm, I'm actually giving away the grace that is anyone's for the asking, simply asking Jesus into your heart and life. You know, Paul argues that there are people that just don't, don't get it. They, they, they don't understand why we believe the things that we believe or why we do the things that we do. And... Uh, you know, I, I understand that everybody is on a journey, you know, and for some people that enter the church, uh, we, we are seen as a dispenser of religious goods and services, I guess. You know, people come to be able to get what they're, they're able to get, whatever they feel that they need in life, and, and yet we are much more than, than just meeting people's needs. We're, we're all about showing people who the, the Savior is by, by how we live and, and leading people to that place of realization that they desperately need Jesus. And uh, we rally around them. You know, we look forward to growing people up in the faith. This is discipleship. We, we reach people. We get them to the point where they realize that they need a Savior. Once they make that commitment to invite Jesus into their life as Savior and Lord, then we seek to grow them from infancy up to a mature Christian that understands what their purpose is. And our purpose is not simply to, uh, to be a spectator. Our, our purpose is to all of our gifts and natural talents going together to grow the kingdom of God. We, we all make a difference uh, for the kingdom. And we were talking, it's interesting, our, our Sunday school lesson was on spiritual gifts today. We all have uh, various gifts and graces from God that we can use for the blessing of the church. And, and so our, our mission is to go beyond our walls, beyond our doors, and to, to continue to reach people. I, uh, I so love uh, the Fun and Faith Kids Club because we're, we're getting young children to, to understand that there is a God, that he, he loves you, and that uh, you, you need his son. You need Jesus as your, your Lord and Savior. And, uh, and so it does my heart good to know that they're being, being taught uh, scripture that is sound and is true. Uh, where it's not being given in many places today. Um, you know, it, it's hard because the word of God is truly like a mirror that's held up to our lives. There are areas of scripture that we would uh, rather not look at. There are areas of scripture that challenge us. There are areas of scripture that we think, well, that doesn't seem fair. And uh, as Paul said, well, who can know the, the mind of God? Who can, can really understand and so I, I acquiesce to, uh, to one that created me, one that loves me, and, and one that has a right plan for the world. And that plan is being worked out as we uh, 
We live and breathe and we have an opportunity every day uh, to proclaim Jesus in, in the world in one way, shape, or another. Uh, for my daughter's wedding, I read this passage to her from uh, Jeremiah. And the prophet Jeremiah declares a message from God that states, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future, and then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. I'm convinced that that's, that's the key. As long as God is just an occasional acquaintance, someone that we seek in times of trouble, we're missing out this wonderful blessing. But Jeremiah understood that we can seek God, and when we seek him with everything within us, there we, we find him. I've uh, had people say over the years, and I've, I've, to, I've said it a couple of times, that uh, they feel that God's far away. Like there's some far off God up there somewhere, and if he's there, he's not hearing me. Who moved? I'm convinced that God's just as close as he always was. But are we giving that time to, to truly seeking him? I think until we, we fall so in love with God through his son and desire to see men and women, boys and girls, come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, then we're really not putting everything that we had into it. Because if we did, if we truly embraced God's plan of salvation for the world through his son, we would be all about making disciples. We'd be all about reaching people you know, with his love and his grace and his, his provision I, uh, I love every opportunity that I have to, uh, to share the good news of Jesus, whether it's at the Golden Agers, whether it's the Fun and Faith Kids Club, or whatever capacity. Uh, if it's just walking Sandy in the neighborhood and talking to people about Jesus, I, I do that. Um, because I know how much God has done for me. And I know that God has a purpose. And he has a plan for every single one of us. And when we realize that, and we realize what is in the, the balance there, that there are lives that are hanging in the balance, that there are men and women, boys and girls, that will reject God's offer of salvation through Christ Jesus, we should all be about our Father's work. We should all be about uh, sharing the love and the grace that we've received. I, I've heard some amazing testimonies from people before. I had... Uh, you know, one person had uh, shared with me how God had worked in their life in, in an amazing way. God had told them what their, their next focus was going to be and that while they were pursuing that and during that time, they could be sharing, you know, God's love and, and grace. And so we do. Honestly, I, um, I, don't, I don't have any clever ways to, uh, to try to disguise or fool people. I'm not looking to fool anybody. I'm not looking to water down the word. All I'm looking to do is to have an honest conversation with you and plainly share with you there's a Savior. He loves you. He loves you so much. He left heaven and he came here to rescue each of us. That's the, the cliche. And if uh, God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure God loves us so much and we know the depth of that love. I um. I love to read C.S. Lewis. If you've read any of C.S. Lewis's uh, books, you know he was very deep and uh, very Christ-focused and centered. Interesting about C.S. Lewis and Lee Strobel is they both were atheists. They did not believe there was a God, let alone a Jesus, and both sought to prove that there was no God, and in the process, in finding, uh, trying to find fault with the Scripture, they found the God of the scripture, they found Jesus. And uh, so I marvel at people that have been at the other end and uh, they gave the time and the effort to seeking. And in seeking, they found. And in finding, they were so blessed by what they found that they wanted to share that with the world around them. That's our focus. God's not sharing anything new today. Uh, everything that we do is being done uh, from the beginning of the world, is God wanted uh, us to know he loved us and he had a plan for us. 
And the, the reality is this, until Jesus Christ is truly our Lord, we each have goals uh, of our own which we serve. But with a little bit of faith and keeping our focus on Christ, those goals begin to align with uh, God's will for our lives. I'm interested uh, to, to understand how people find their niche in the church. And some people do that uh, intentionally and some people do it by accident. But it's always a blessing to see how God has taken a person that loves a, an area of life and then be able to use that area in loving others in a ministry. And I, I see that time and time again how God uses people in uh, unusual ways to, uh, to be a blessing. All right, so I'll close with this last thought. We, um, we talked about it in Sunday school. Every one of us has at least one spiritual gift that we can use uh, for the kingdom. Most of us have more than one gift, and many of the gifts all of us really have. Uh, we can all be uh, compassionate and can help people, and we can uh, do the things that we need to do to be encouragers. Uh, those are things that should be pretty simple. And then there are other aspects of, of, of gifts that we have, but all the gifts come together to make a difference for the kingdom of God. The, the problem with the, the church in America today is I think that so many people are caught up in the stuff of the world that they've lost sight of what our initial calling was. And so I, um, this is one of those messages that I actually preached for somebody else or uh, have written for somebody else and that person's not here. But I'm praying for that person. And uh, I wanted to think out loud with you in case somebody tells you that being an evangelical is a dirty word. You can tell them it's never a dirty thing to share Jesus in a lost and hurting world. That is what it means to be an evangelical. Let me pray with you. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that you've given us the capacity to know you and to love you and to proclaim you, to receive your Son as Savior and Lord. And our mission is to share that love and grace in a lost and hurting world. Give us wisdom in that process. Let us uh, rely on your Holy Spirit to, to lead and to guide and uh, to direct. But it's our desire, Father, that we could make a difference in this world, that uh, we, in, in uh, following you and growing in our faith, may be a catalyst for others to, to seek and to follow and to, to realize their desperate need for you as well. And so, Father, thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, all that you will do, and the opportunities that you give us each and every day to love you and proclaim you. For these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our uh, closing hymn today is uh, hymn number 488, Just As I Am, 488. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, 
Without a Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am now, wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relief, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am without one plea, I love that God takes us where we're at, and from there He builds us from the inside out. I've had people over the years tell me, Pastor, when I quit drinking, I'm going to come to church. Just come to church, and God will work out the details. You know, if you're, you're here today or you're watching at home and you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord and you'd, you'd like to know a little more about that, you know, give me a call, stop by and see me. I'd love to talk with you about that. And I, I know that true life can only be found when we find the author of life. We find that in Christ Jesus. Go out into the world this week and be the love and grace of Christ Jesus to those that God places in your path. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and life abundant and goodness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Amen and amen. Have a great week, friends.